worse in this room than anywhere else. It's on your radio right now. Do you know how to pop that coochie for a good one? There you go. It's the world's most dangerous one to show. Got the cameras. I'm about to f*** this <laughs> Yo 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 Angela E is out. Charlemagne was popping. Peace to the planet. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Hump day. Yes, it's Wednesday Hump Day, middle of the damn week. Man, happy to be here. What's happening? How y'all feeling out there? If you woke up this morning, okay, take a deep breath for everybody who can no longer do that. All right? Thank God for another day of life. Let gratitude be your attitude today. Definitely feels like a Wednesday to me. What Wednesday feel like? Tired. Eh, and you old. <laughs> when you get, listen, I'm serious. When you get to our age, you married, you got all these kids, you got six kids, I got four. Life is a constant state of exhaustion. And it's fine. Hmm. It just is what it is. You just got to take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, pl- I played Uber driver yesterday. Uh, my wife has. No, you didn't. You're yesterday. a daddy. <laughs> no, nah, I was an Uber driver. <laughs> okay, what are you yesterday. talking about? You played Uber driver. I was Uber you driver. You don't yesterday. babysit. You don't Uber drive your daddy. No, nah, I was Uber driver yesterday. Oh, please. I went from tennis to acting to soccer, and then you had to sit out there. Then I would just come a- become a soccer dad. Like, we just talk about weird things. No, nah, I love just, it. It's the weirdest thing ever. I love it because my daughter's, you know, 13, and. Um, one, it's, it's weird being a father trying to like have conversations with your 13-year-old daughter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you know she's really not interested in nothing that you're saying. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she definitely likes. She definitely has made it clear to me that she likes talking to her mom way more than she likes talking. <laughs> well, that I, has been established. Well, I told my kids yesterday, no. Really? We were in the car. They was like, can we hear her? I don't want to hear. I don't want to talk about Bruno. I said, no, I could not hear that song anymore. I said, there's no more. I said, I cannot do it anymore. Drop on the clues, mom's playing Canto. No, I said, no more. I, 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 wish, I, I wish I could tell my children I no. told them no yesterday. We mm-hmm. were in that car. They mm-hmm. said, dad, can we hear? Mm-hmm. Can't talk about Bruno mm-hmm. no more. I said, no. Mm-hmm. My six-year-old and three-year-old are not trying to hear nothing except for Encanto. I've been watching Encanto for a month straight. Okay, and not just Encanto. <laughs> my three-year-old loves to say, daddy, can I watch random Encanto videos? I'm like, what are you talking about? But on YouTube, you can literally type in random Encanto videos, and it's these people playing with, like, Encanto dolls and creating these other stories with Encanto. So, of course, I got to sit there and watch them to make sure they're not doing nothing inappropriate. You know what I mean? We don't talk about Bruno. And, and I just need, I need, I, I'm making this tie, and I say this with love. You ain't hot in them six-year-old streets. They don't like what you, they do not like what you did <laughs> to that Encanto record. You- as a they was, they not feeling that. That was just too much for them. They did not, they didn't know what was happening. They didn't need it. They like, we won't, don't talk about Bruno the way it was. Oh my goodness. And why wouldn't you get Bruno Mars for that record? Wouldn't that make sense? That would make sense. It maybe Bruno, he, maybe they want to do it. I don't know. Yeah, I but I just, I just, I just can't with that song anymore. I told my kids, no, we're not playing that no more. Right, Fuck, my phone is dead. I can't find it on nothing. It's no. And Canto is a part of our life. And Canto is little kids Hamilton. Okay, Goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what Encanto is. All right. All right. Encanto is fabric of our lives right now. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Let's talk uh, COVID nineteen. You're not excited about it, huh? You don't care anymore? Well, we'll give you some updates. COVID ain't as hot as in Canto. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Canto way hotter than COVID. Way right hotter. Now. COVID was one of the number one trending topics. Not no more. Oh, my goodness. It's the Breakfast Club. If you're wondering around you. This was another song that um, my daughters were mad at. It. Why? Because... Uh, I tell them hate is a bad word. So when they sing the song, and every time they say hate, they say, they say like, Dad, this is a bad word in the song, but I like to sing it. I'm like, Oh, she's saying I hate you? Yeah. I hate oh. you. I never paid no attention. You were just, what were you doing? <laughs> I was acting like all black people when they don't know the words to a song. I was just, nah, 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 nah. I wasn't really saying nothing. My goodness. All right. Well, let's get in some front page news. Now, last night uh, was the McDonald's All-American game. That's where they get the best high school players, both uh, both boys and girls. 
Uh, I want to shout out to Derek Whitehead. That's the little homie. He's uh, from Newark, New Jersey. He played su- uh, basketball with my son and when my son was like five years old, all the way up until my son stopped playing basketball. So I just want to say salute to Derek. Oh, he was Whitehead. in the McDonald's game. Oh, yeah, oh he was, so he's a beast. Then. Yeah, he was MVP for uh, last night's game. So oh, congratulations wow. to him. He's going to Duke next year. Oh so wow, wow! Congratulations, drop a bomb yeah. for him Who's and that young man. All right, now NFL owners approve a new rule change. Now, this is the new playoff overtime rules. Now, both teams will have the opportunity to possess the ball in overtime in the postseason. If the score is tied after each team has possessed the ball, the next score wins. How do you feel about that? I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, it's like a year too late, right? We wish you had that for last year's playoffs. Right. (laughs) Especially for that Buffalo game. Who was Buffalo playing? Was it Josh Allen? Who? Bills and Chiefs, Chiefs, yeah, yeah. When Mahomes and Allen was going back and forth, like you wish you got an opportunity to see Josh Allen get a get a chance to you know tie the game in overtime, but we didn't. But yeah, I'm happy for it. It's cool. All right, now the uh, 21 states challenged the CDC transit mask rule. 21 states, uh, with Republican attorneys, of course, General sued Tuesday to halt the federal government's requirement that people wear masks on planes, trains, and ferries, and other public transportation amid COVID uh, coronavirus pandemic. The mandate is in current form, may be in effect of only a few more weeks. The CDC recently extended until April 18th. Uh, besides Florida, the states filing a new travel mask lawsuit was Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Utah, Virginia, and West Virginia. What's, what's interesting about that is like, you know, we definitely back out here raw dog and air. But the one place I say I'm going to continue to wear a mask is the airport. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, salute the, the the Asian community. We've been watching them do that for years. And I've always said when I see them, I'm like, what they, what do they know that we don't? Mm-hmm. And guess what? Now I feel like we know what they don't. And that's that these viruses out here. And I read yesterday that the flu has shot back up because people uh, are Taking wearing masks. less, ma- less mm-hmm. masks. Over yeah. the past couple of years, the flu was going down because people were wearing masks. So. Well, now this Omar, uh, I was going to say Omarion. Omicron BA2 variant is not a dominant in the U.S. They're saying about 55% of the people that actually have COVID have that variant. They said it's not as deadly, uh, very contagious, but that's the one that's coming up. And they're saying uh, that it's actually going up. So cases are shooting up. Now, they're also saying... What's it called, though? Omarion B2K? Um, no. Um, what is it? Now you're messing me up. Omar, uh, Omicron BA2. BA2, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, the second booster shots are authorized for adults 50 and older, oh, or if up. you're having some... Uh, why do you say that? Because, man, they just need to stop talking about second and third and fourth boosters and just tell everybody, look, man, COVID is going to be here in some form and some type of mutation, you know, for the rest of our lives, and every year you're probably going to have to get an annual COVID shot, just like you get an annual flu shot. Well, they said a second booster shot uh, is authorized for adults 50 and older. And why do they keep calling it a booster? You don't call a flu shot that you get every year a booster shot, or do you? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Oh, they, they call, call it flu a booster? They do. Oh, oh they do. Okay. Nick, our cameraman Nick said they do. All right. Well, get it off Clearly, your you chest. Clearly, you can tell who doesn't get vaccinated <laughs> in this room. 800 585 If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800 585 Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Oh, hey, this Keita. Hey, Peter. Peace, Keita. Again. What's up, Keita? <laughs> what up, Keita? Get it, get it off your chest. So, so I haven't been working out for the last past couple of weeks at 5 a.m., so I haven't been checking in with y'all at 6. But I've been popping in and out. Where's Angela Yee? Because... I'm real confused. She off this week. She off? She been off she was off two week. days last week and, last and this week, week yeah. too. But why are you slacking on yeah. your workout, though? Let's talk about that. Oh, my God. My head just wasn't right, and I was just eating whatever I want, but I'm back on track. I started this morning, so okay. it goes well for me. Uh, you don't sound too – you're not convincing me. You're you're not don't, enthused. You don't sound like you're talking yourself into it right now. I am trying so hard to lose this stomach. Made my stomach flatter and my booty fatter. Charlemagne. Hey, it's, it's, so it's, it's springtime right now. Summer right around the corner. Okay, so I need to get on it. And no. thank you so much for all my black um, effects. I got my black effects hat and my two books. Okay. Oh, there you go. And I'm, I love them. I pre- that's all love, Keita. I'm taking them too. Yes. 
Thank you so much. Well, have a good one. I can't wait to see you, Yee. Hello, who's this? This is Jada. Good morning. Jada, good morning. Get it off your chest. Morning, Jada. Good morning. Can you can you say good morning, Queen? How you? Good morning. Peace, Queen. Good morning. How are you? I've been waiting my whole life for that. <laughs> How you feeling? So this is why I got it. I, I feel good. I'm having a good morning already. Good. This is why I got to get off my chest. Go ahead, Mama. Envy, I love you, but you think everybody got money the way you do. No, I don't. I don't got no money. Oh. My kids got some money, but I ain't got nothing. So this is what happened. A couple of weeks ago, y'all were talking about this lady, and she like brought her kids, her son, like three houses or something. Mm-hmm. And then you were saying, like, houses is somewhere with only, like, $5,000 right now. Milwaukee. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, I don't got $5,000. And Charlamagne said, that's a lot of money. And I was like, oh, my God. Thank you, Charlamagne. Because I'm feeling like I'm doing something wrong in life. I can't afford this. <laughs> and Charlamagne was like, no, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Like, oh. Think, that's all I want to say. Just that, don't don't, feel, don't don't feel bad, man. We just all we just all out here acting our wage. That's all. There you go. Envy can't help it. That's his language. Thank you. I'm just trying to encourage some people to buy some houses and have some ownership. That's all, Mama. Yeah, trust me, I'm on it, but I just I'm just not there yet. And it just whew. Ooh. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool Envy made you feel poor. He did. <laughs> I, I, I just said that, I just said the houses are five thousand dollars, which is which are, which are good great prices. What did you hear after that? Did you hear Kim Kardashian in your head saying, "Get up off your ass and work"? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to encourage people, Mo. Oh man! Well, you have a good one. Right? Sending you love. Sending you love, you. Queen. I love, love, love you too. Back. Get it off and your chest. And be out here making people feel poor in the morning. <laughs> 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I have the best advice for women in business. Stop being poor. Stop being poor. It seems like nobody wants to work this It's Envy's new theme song. It's Envy's new theme song. It's Envy's new theme song, y'all. One time for Z-Way. Stop being poor. Stop being poor. Stop all right, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Power 105.1. The Breakfast Club. Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. I'm Tally. I'm Tally. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm Tally. I'm calling call you. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hello, Hello Breakfast Club. It's uh, Adam from London calling again. Uh, Envy, please don't hang up. I'll come in peace. <laughs> you come in peace. Adam, what's up? Get it up peace, Adam. Phone. What's happening? <laughs> what's going on, man? Um, I just wanted to give one of my close friends a shout out. Um, we've been boys since we were kids. And he's just dropped his debut EP, available on all streaming services. Um, he's called A1 Rico, Golden Era. That's A1 Rico, Golden Era. Um, I mean, he, he's been nice on the beat since we were kids, and I've been stressing him to release music our whole lives, and he's finally done it. Um, so I'm really proud of him. But honestly, he's incredible. He's, he's one of the best talents to come out of the UK. So I don't know if you guys are aware of the UK music scene and, and what's hot and what's popping right now, but he's definitely one you want to keep an eye on for sure. I'm okay. paying attention now that you told us. Well, yeah. thank you, brother. Yeah, but check him out on Instagram as well. Um, his Instagram is Run It Up Reeks. Um, that's Run It Up R E E K S. Um, and yeah, man, show some love if, you, if you're listening for all of your listeners. If you're in the car right now, get it up on Spotify, Apple Music, turn the volume up, get the fire extinguisher ready because it's straight fire. All right, brother. Hello, who's this? Yeah, hello. Good morning, guys. Peace and blessings. How you guys doing this morning? What's Sean up, Sean Stone? Stone? What's up? I'm good, Envy. I'm good, uh, Charlamagne. Hey, um, I was reading an article uh, yesterday. I'm not sure if you guys know about Wale artist, that that uh, black female who was talking about committing suicide. Yes. That's Wale's artist, Chica? I didn't know it was Wale's artist, but Chica. Yeah. I didn't so know that was Wale's say, artist. Yeah, she is, actually. I, wa I wanted to say something about that. Go ahead. Uh, you know, maybe to help somebody uh, in 2020, in 2021, you know, I never had a thought like that before, but that thought ran through my mind. And I was going through a lot, and at that time, when those type of thoughts are going through your mind, it's just you in the middle, 
the devil on one side and then God on the other side. You're not thinking about anything else. The devil, what he does, he lays everything down on the on the on the table that you've done wrong in your life, right? And he says, "See, that's why you shouldn't be living no more." But then God asked me one question. God says, "Sean, if you do that to yourself, think about the most important pe- person that will miss you in this world." So I just want to say, if anybody is going through that thought. Just think about the most important person that will miss you in this world. And the most important person that came to my mind was my son, my seven-year-old son. And I, I just couldn't do something like that. So I know a lot of people going through a lot of different things out here. And suicidal thoughts is real. Because when you're in that moment, it's just you in the middle, God on one side, and the devil on one side. But them thoughts don't come from God. They come from the devil. All right. Appreciate you, Sean. Hello, who's this? Hey, what up, though? This is Drew. What up, though? Drew, you what must up, be calling Drew? from the D. Detroit. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Chest. Yes, sir. <laughs> I live in Georgia, but uh, still from Detroit. Um, first and foremost, uh, good morning, Charlemagne the God, DJ Envy. Uh, I appreciate everything that you guys do. Appreciate uh, you, King. Charlemagne, I go to therapy for anxiety and PTSD. Man, oh. Envy, I love the way you love your wife, your family. You talk about real estate. I'm looking at buying some rental property. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> um, tomorrow's my birthday, and I'm just happy to celebrate uh, 39 years of life. There my dad go. once said it's better to be seen than viewed, and I think about that every year for my birthday. And I just want to shout out my parents, my circle, my uh, village that raised me, and uh, I want to shout out my beautiful black queen Felicia. Now uh, you've been with me for four years. Uh, you've been amazing in my life. Um, you've helped me grow. And I just love you so much, and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. That's all. Well, happy all early right. born day, man. Absolutely I'm I'm glad brother. that you out here doing the work on yourself. I'm glad that you're investing in yourself. All of that, man. Appreciate you, King. I appreciate you, brother. And do you have any books for me, hats or something? Uh, oh, definitely. We definitely can get you a hat. Hold and, on. Um, Hold on, all right? I'll send you a copy of Anita Kopak Shallow Waters. That's all I, that's all I got right now. Y'all, 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 y'all tapped me out last month, but I'll, send you, I'll definitely send you a Black Effect hat, too. He on line eight. Get it off your chest, 800-585-1051. When we come back, I know we're tired of talking about this, but this is the last one. We'll see who said they would have sued Will for two. Now, come on now. It's starting to get, like, they, it's starting to get like Thanksgiving dinner. It's it time is. to throw it out. But it I, I, I do think that there's some great conversations that can come from this, but it's not the ones we're having right now. All right. Well, we'll get into it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Let's get to the rumors. I'm tired of talking about this already, but we must. The Oscars. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. On the Breakfast Club. So listen up. No, 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 no. Now let's talk the Oscars now. According to Nielsen Time Slots. The 2022 Oscars saw no significant surge in viewers after uh, King Richard star, of course, Will Smith, took a whack at comic uh, Chris Rock. Now, they're saying uh, there was a jump around 614,000 viewers at 11, uh, 11 p.m. That's when Smith took the stage for his acceptance speech. But they said the show drew 15.36 million viewers and a 3.2 rating with adults 18 to 49. What does that mean? They said it was the second least watched and lowest rated Academy Awards ever. Mm-hmm. Last year's show had an all-time low with 10 million, so this was the second. But they killed on social. They did well they, on they social, said, especially after that slap. After that slap, it, it, it went crazy on social media. But y'all weren't watching it on TV. Well, yesterday, Gail she interviewed Jim Carrey, and of course, they spoke about it. And this is what Jim Carrey said: You know, you do not have the right to to walk up on stage and smack somebody in the face because they said words. No, no, I agree. I, I think we all agree on that. I just thought, Jim, that it escalated to that. You know what I mean? That it escalated to that level. It didn't escalate. It came out of nowhere because Will has something going on inside him that's frustrated. And I, I, I wish him the best. I really do. I don't, I, don't, I don't have anything against Will Smith. It was just a selfish moment to cast a pall over the whole thing. Now, he also talks about what he would have did in that situation. I was sickened. I was sickened by the standing ovation. I felt like Hollywood is just spineless, en masse. It really felt like, oh, this is a really clear indication that uh, we're not the cool club anymore. They asked Chris, do you want to file charges? And Chris apparently said, no, he did not. He doesn't want the hassle. I, I'd have, I'd have uh, for announced 
this morning that I was suing Will for $200 million because that <laughs> video is going to be there forever. It's going to be ubiquitous. You know, that insult is going to last a very long time. Jim Carrey is not wrong. And I know black people don't want to hear that coming from a white man. But the reality is if Will Smith wasn't Will Smith, he would have gotten kicked out of the awards and probably arrested. And if Chris Rock wasn't Chris Rock, he would have sued Will Smith for $200 million, probably $500 million. Yeah, a little more, $500 million. And, and, and guess what? If that was to happen, you may not like it, but what do I always tell y'all? You can do what you want, say what you want, but you can't pick the consequences. And I realize we, I've said it all the time, we really are a society that loves deriding dysfunction. The bigger conversation that should be happening right now is that we watched a man who's 53 years old and never had any public meltdowns like this, we watched him snap. Correct. We, we watched a man project all his pain and hurt onto another human and in the process traumatize that individual. And like I said yesterday, who's checking on Chris Rock? What childhood traumas, you know, were triggered for him in that moment? We should be discussing mental health right now. We should be discussing healing. We should be discussing men having a safe space to express themselves and process their emotions so they don't bleed on people who didn't cut them. Okay? I love Chris Rock and I love Will Smith. I am a Pinkett Smith, Winfrey Knowles Carter. That's my last name. But we either going to be really serious about breaking generational curses or we going to keep deriding dysfunction. The choice is yours. Now, Tony Rock, which is Chris Rock's brother, he's a comedian. Uh, he's been up here before. Yeah. He answered a, a bunch of questions online. So one of them was, so Diddy was lying when he said Chris and Will made up that night? He said, yep. He says, uh, somebody else asked him, are we fighting fire with fire or going with the professional route? Tony Rock replied, it's on, bro. And then he says, who you think hits harder, Will or Jada's boyfriend? And Tony Rock says, Mama Rock, do you approve of the apology? Tony Rock says, no. Says Tony Rock, more importantly, how was Chris Rock and what he checkmate on his comedy tour? And he replied, uh, Chris Rock is still rich. I just think this is all way bigger than a joke and a slap. Like the, uni is. the universe is really trying to tell us something. God is really trying to tell us something. And I think that it's divine that Chris Rock's next stand up special is called Ego Death. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to be called. The tour he's going on this year is called Ego Death. Mm -hmm. Y'all better pay attention. Now, Jada Pinkett also posted something on Instagram yesterday. She uh, posted, this is a season for healing, and I'm here for it. it, it drop one of Clues Bomb for that. Yes. That's all we should be discussing. Mental health, healing, people having a safe space to express themselves and process their emotions so we stop bleeding on people who didn't cut us. I'm with that. That's the energy I'm on forever. Right. Well, we have more uh, Oscar talk. There's so much to talk about, but I want to change gears a little bit. Uh, Tony Braxton, she spoke about her sister who passed away uh, a week ago, and she speaks about her, her last days. How is this changing gears? Um, you never think that it's going to um, happen to you and your family. I'm okay. Today's okay. It's okay. It's not my best day, but it's an okay day, you know, and I'm happy that I'm here and I'm happy that I get to talk about it. And her birthday's coming up soon on the second and my sisters and I, we're going to celebrate and have a big Tracy day thingy. And um, they thought she wouldn't make it through, uh, through Thanksgiving. They thought she would make it through Christmas. They thought she would make it through the new year and she made it through March. So you have to celebrate. How is that changing gears, Envy? You well, change you change the gear to grief. Well, it we, from need the Oscars. we need healing from grief too, Envy. But also okay. she talks about the rite of passage. I wake up every morning and I go, Oh, did I dream it? Did I dream it? And I have to remind myself, no, she's gone, but she's been here with us for fifty years. So I try to relish in that moment and I try to smile about it and just be grateful for the time you have. And you have to always remember be, to be kind to one another. We're sisters, so we're always going to fight. That's what sisters do, okay? So it's just our right to pass. It's just yeah. a family. That's what you do. But in the end, we were always together. We always loved each other. Mm. And we're just very fortunate to have had my sister with us for as long as we had. Definitely rest in peace. I'm definitely send the healing energy to mm. the Braxton family. All right. Let well. me show you how to change gears. I'm coming to lick your ankle. What? Exactly. Now, now the gears can change. <laughs> what? Okay. Actually, we're in a whole other car. Would you like to ride? No. Passenger? No. Shotgun? No, I you won't. You want to sit on my lap? I teach you how to drive. It's stick shift. I will walk. All oh, right. And okay. that is your rumor report. What is wrong with if you? If you want to change it, change it. Take the car somewhere How you else? just go there? Like, oh, like change, 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 change the Like, you go so far. That's like, right. Now you want to lick my that, ankles. Yeah, that means yeah, if you yeah, lick my right. ankles, that means you want to lick from the back, right? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, now we ain't even in the car, no boy. <laughs> All right, now we ain't even in the car. All right, well, we talk, whoa. we talking about Joe Biden whoa. when we come back. All right, whoa. it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Hey, it's Angela Yee. Have you taken a look at the general insurance lately? Switch to the general and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Call 800 General or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. WWPR FMHD1 New York. And our heart radio station. All right. And some champagne showers. All 
Why are you playing so much slow songs in the morning? <laughs> like, like, Jesus Christ. What do you want me to do? You want I'm me trying to be up. Do the music yeah, I'm just saying. I, and by the way, I only hear the music. I only hear the music when I put everything? my headphones on. Like, why do we play so much slow music in the morning? It's the, the morning time. Don't y'all want to be up? You want me to do everything? I don't, it's, like, I'm, it's like you're driving in the car and the windshield wipers are going and it's not even raining. Why, why is everything are we doing about this? cars with you this morning? Huh? Why is everything about a car? Why? Why? <laughs> you know how to drive stick? You know what? Let's get this in front of page question, news. I'm, and I ignored you. Now, your president, Joe Biden, signed Ignoring the Emmett... penis don't make it go away. <laughs> your president, Joe Biden, signed the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching oh, Act Lord. on Tuesday. All right. Now, he talks about it. Now, this bill was... They were trying to pass this bill for what? A long... For what? 50, 60, 70 years? A long time. I don't know. 100 years, maybe? But he talks about it here. Lynching was pure terror to enforce the lie that not everyone... Not everyone belongs in America. Not everyone is created equal. <sighs> Terror to systematically undermine hard, hard-fought civil rights. Innocent men, women, and children hung by nooses from trees. Hate never goes away. It only hides. It hides under the rocks. Given just a little bit of oxygen, it comes roaring back out, screaming. But what stops it is all of us, not a few. All of us have to stop. It's 2022, and y'all just getting an anti-lynching bill passed. I mm-hmm. guess at this pace, we'll get voting rights by 3017. By the time we By 3017, we will be getting voting rights. By the time okay? we're 90. Well, Kamala we'll, Harris. We'll be long gone by then, but whatever show y'all listening to in 3017, <laughs> we'll be celebrating voting rights. Well, Kamala Harris spoke on it, too. Lynching is and has always been a hate crime. And to make clear that the federal government may now prosecute these crimes as such. And it has been said, the victims of lynching were targeted, and let's be clear about this, because they were working to build a better America. But unfortunately, the cowards couldn't see. Those folks who were killed, they were business owners, creating economic opportunity in their community by which all would prosper and benefit. Let us also be here gathered to recommit ourselves to that unfinished business as well. It's really sad that that bill is just getting passed. And like, do y'all really want me to celebrate that? That right there tells me everything I need to know about America, okay? And Democrats, if that's something y'all gonna be using to try to galvanize people to come out for midterms, then y'all out of y'all damn mind, okay? Look what we did for y'all. We gave y'all an anti-lynching bill and a black Supreme Court judge, vote for us, vote for us. Hey, come on, man. Where's the George Floyd uh, Policing Act? Where's the John Lewis Voting Rights Act? Where's Build Back Better? We ain't forget. We got 40 more years for that. Old okay. Clothes. Where's the student loan debt that you promised? $10,000 off. That ain't happening. Taylor, you got $10,000 off your student loans? Nope. Nope. Man, please. All right. Now, anti lynching bill. The FTC accuses TurboTax of deceiving its customers. Now, TurboTax is the most widely used tax software in America. Now, they say that in its ads, it has a free option. Uh, option but they're saying that's not true. They said it only makes free filing available for people with simple tax returns, a definition that can be used so many different ways. So uh, FTC, they're in big trouble with the FTC. I don't and even know what that is. What is that FTC? TurboTax. You know, FTC. They're oh, the one that oh, regulate okay, okay. all the things that's going on out there. Got you. And last, I thought this story was dope. Now, uh, this pizzeria in Queens, this dad and father stopped this lady from getting beat up and stabbed up. Uh, this was outside of their... Uh, pizzeria. They seen a lady. Uh, I believe she was an Asian woman. She was getting beat up and stabbed. And the son and father went and tried to stop what was going on. It was three men on one. The father and son held two of the individuals down until the police came. One got away. Now, the, the son was 38 years old and the father was 68 years old. Now, the father was stabbed nine times. Wow. And did not let the assailant go at all. Now, he wow. son he, uh, suffered punctured lungs in the attack. And uh, he is doing okay now. He's in the hospital, but they saved that young woman, uh, that 61-year-old woman's life. What happened to the pizzeria? Pizzeria is fine. They they have to shut down for a couple of days because... Uh, and that, that was their pizzeria, the their sons? Their pizzeria, yeah. Wow. So they came out and, and helped the, the older woman, and it was three assailants. And even though the assailants were stabbing them, because they both got stabbed, they still held them down and waited for the police. So, and drop the clues bombs for them brothers. You know what I'm saying? Pizzerias have had a bad name in New York City. You know, ever since, uh, you know, this tragic incident that happened at Styles, you know, um, you know, after Radio Rahim's death, okay, 
And you know, Mookie and them had to go do what they do. You see me? I'm repping he's this morning. About, he's talking about a, a fake. A, 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 a fake. We, we, the boycott styles. All right. Uh, boycott styles campaign work. Shout to Spike Lee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So salute to all the non problematic pizzerias out there. All right. All right. So. They already uh, they started a GoFundMe to help with their hospital bills and also because they have to shut down the pizzeria because they're both in the hospital uh, and they still want to play their employees. So uh, I think they already raised over a hundred thousand so, dollars. Wow! This happened yesterday. So shout to them. Heroes should be rewarded. Heroes should be mm -hmm. celebrated. Okay, those are real heroes right there. All, All right. right. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Now, coming up, we have Alicia Garza joining us. Alicia Garza. Uh, you know, Alicia Garza. Uh, she's the head of the Black Futures Lab, but she also has this uh, this thing called the Black Census Project. That's right. We're going to talk to her about that. She's a activist. She's the co-creator of the Black Lives Matter movement and hashtag Black Lives Matter. So we're going to talk to her. And she's also the host of the podcast, Lady Don't Take No. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk to her next. All right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Alicia Garza. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for having Happy me. Happy to have you. How are you, first and foremost? How you feeling? Genuinely, how are you? You know, after after mm -hmm. COVID, when you ask that question, I want honest answers. How are you? I'm going to give you the honest answer. I'm in between. Okay. I'm moving. I'm moving across country. Wow. My house isn't done, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My stuff is there, so I'm a little bit like, I'm not quite here and I'm not quite there, but um, in the in-between, there's a whole bunch of stuff to learn about you and what you can take on, what you can endure, and also what you're made out of. That's a good, honest answer. My therapist says that's why when somebody asks you how you're doing, you should give them the honest answer. That's right. Because it helps you. And I always say, when I feel like how you feel, I say I'm, um, I'm somewhere between O and K. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm somewhere in between old and new. Old and new. Old okay. and new. Well, congratulations. You are on Times uh, 100 Most Influential People in the World issue. It's true. Mm -hmm. Thank how was, you. How, was, how did that achievement make you feel? How What did that mean to you? It's an incredible honor that I don't always know how to hold, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You know, I, I still feel like my life is unfolding, and I feel like I do what we're supposed to be doing in this world, which is making it better. And so many people are doing that work and don't get to be on covers of magazines. It's humbling and it's also, it's like a big weight to carry. When somebody sticks a label on you, you either got to show up or get out. Okay. <laughs> so, but for, for those who don't know, what is, what is that work? Making black communities powerful in mm -hmm. politics so we can be powerful in the rest of our lives. And so the work that I do to make black folks powerful in politics is really about making sure that our communities are making the rules and changing the rules. Mm -hmm. And as long as we have the tools to do that, right, we can access the things that we want and need. As long as we're depending on other people who don't have our best interests in mind to make the rules and change the rules, they're always going to change the rules in favor of themselves mm -hmm. and their interests. So we want to change that dynamic with the Black Futures Lab and the Black to the Future Action Fund. And the first step in that is the Black Census Project that we're running this year. What, what exactly is the Black Census Project? The Black Census is the largest survey of Black people in America in 157 years. And this year, we're going to break our own record to be the largest survey of Black people in history. Wow. How many? Like 20 million, 30 million? Well, the largest survey of Black people in America now, right, is under 30,000. So we're shooting for 200,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to talk to black folks from everywhere, all 50 states. Last time we did this, we did get responses from all 50 states, from every demographic, every political ideology, religion, language, uh, any background you could think of. We actually went into prisons and jails and had people take the survey. Um, we really did our best to reach as many folks as possible. And the reason we did that is because there are so many people out there who don't ever get to weigh in on the circumstances of their own lives. Mm. The number one thing we heard in this survey was that nobody ever has asked me what I think, what I feel, or what I want for my future. Wow. And so when you think about a quote unquote wow. democracy, right? Mm -hmm. wow. Where it's supposed to be, you know, everybody participates. The fact that you can have such a wide swath of people say, nobody's ever asked me what I want or what I think about tells you that there's deep flaws mm -hmm. in the way that this country operates. So what I love about this project is that it is a model for how democracy can work. Um, and as I was saying earlier, 
we're in this moment of reconstructing who we can be mm-hmm. and who we should be. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the Black Census is really an opportunity for us to reshape how we're governed and how we govern. Um, and so I'm really excited about the project. Folks who want to check it out, go to blackcensus.org, take the survey. You can also become one of our partners uh, and you can just hit us at holla at blackfutureslab.org. You know, with, with so much good that you do and you try to help people so much, does it ever bother you when it feels like on social media they scrutinize things that shouldn't be scrutinized? He's talking about niggas, right? <laughs> Well, you know, it used to really bother me. However, in this day and age, we have celebritized people who are doing work to change the world. And that has happened a few times in our lifetime, but not at this scale. What I realize is that the way people engage in social change, if they're not involved in it, is from the perspective of watching somebody as if they're their favorite entertainer or celebrity. Mm. And so when you do that and you have no connection to somebody, it's really easy to be like, I don't like what you're doing over here. I don't like what you're doing over here. Everybody has the right to do that. Does it make you not want to do the work though? Cause it's like you do no. so much work and when they scrutinize, you'd be like, can't y'all see I'm, I'm trying to do the work? No, it doesn't. Because at the end of the day, what I know is that not everybody's coming. And all I can do is do my work to make sure that everybody has a shot if they want to. I do feel like I pay attention to who I do the work with, especially when I see so much chatter out there in the world. I like to work with people that are ready to go. You said something earlier and it made me think about something that I've always felt, but I just didn't have the, I guess, data to back it up, but you have it. Like the, with the Black Census survey, when you said that uh, people feel like they've never been asked what they want. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why sometimes leaders get that type of scrutiny because mm-hmm. you're on the front line and you have you know, demands and things that you want, but other some people are saying like, well, that's maybe not what I want, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So how, who are you to speak for all black people? So I think that's where some yeah. of that comes from sometimes. Well, that is a challenge, right? It's that two things. One, people really do long and yearn to be heard and to be asked what we want and to be consulted. And the challenge is it's hard to give everybody everything they want when they want it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the challenge or burden of, you know, somebody who was in a position of power is that you have to figure out a path to get as most people, as many people as possible, what they might need. And of course, the way that power is set up, right? I think a lot of people also feel helpless because they're so far away from the mechanisms of power. Mm. I feel like what is great about the black census is that you can actually see all the complexity of who we are. You can see that black people are not a monolith. We don't all think the same. We don't all feel the same. And that's actually a good thing. It's a challenge to figure out, okay, but how do you govern for the most amount of people as opposed to right now where we're basically governing for corporations and big business, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How do you govern for the majority Mm -hmm. of people? So if you haven't taken the survey yet, please do so at blackcensus.org. All right, we have more with Alicia Garza. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We still have civil rights activist and author in the building, Alicia Garza. Charlamagne? And, and you were one of the founders of, of Black Lives Matter. Correct. And I often wonder, does that help or hurt now? <laughs> I, don't days? I don't know. It's a great question. I don't know. Um, I spend so much of my time figuring out how we change, who gets what, when, and why. And that's politics, Mm -hmm. right? And so this last decade has been so interesting because I've been doing this work for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I was doing this work before Black Lives Matter. I'm gonna be doing this work after Black Lives Matter. High school. You literally in middle school, right? So I struggle to be defined only in that way. Um, It's something that I've been proud to contribute to and proud to be a part of. It's not the totality of who I am. And Black Lives Matter is still in motion. It's still growing. It's still evolving. It's still changing. And um, it is still shaping and defining who we are. And that Mm -hmm. is incredible. And it's a lot. (laughs) It's a lot. I uh, don't want to be the Black Lives Matter lady, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I am somebody who is working really hard 
for our communities to have the tools we need to be powerful in every aspect of our lives. And so for folks who want to join us, hit us up at blackfutureslab.org and take the census. It takes 10 minutes. I love how she's on message. (laughs) (laughs) Like people don't do that. Like they'll shout it out one time at the end. Like she goes on with it. But I, I, you know what disturbs me and, and I see it all the time. And it's when you have an activist, people always act like an activist is not supposed to live. Mm. Like you're not supposed to own a home. Mm. You're not supposed to have a car. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to have a, a, a nice jacket on. Right. And that bothers me because it's like, you know, they're people too and they work. They have right. jobs. They have investments. Right. And and how do you feel about that being that? Like, it's like you you just said, hey, I just bought a new house. I'm sure somebody's gonna be like, well, how did she buy a new house? She must have used donations that she got from someone. <laughs> like, and, and I know you must get that all it's the so time. Wild. Well, first of all, um, having just bought a house, I want to tell people that the prices of homes in California the roof. is out of control. Absolutely. I mean, I'm talking about in the hood, a house is a million dollars. I like need people to understand this. Mm-hmm. But also let's, I mean, just zooming back to the bigger conversation, I think we have to be really careful about who we let tell our stories and why. Money, power, and credit is always something that people turn up about. That's a fact. And that's not unique to Black Lives Matter. That's just been true in movements for a long time. And I do feel like one of the strategies in this moment is to decredit and delegitimize the strength of this movement. Mm. And there have been some particular strategies being used to do so. And one of them is what I call the preacherfication of our movement. It's the idea that somebody is like selling you snake oil and trying to profit off of you, right? I get it. It's the same thing they do to pastors. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Correct. do that to Bishop T.D. Jakes a lot. Yeah, 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 they do it to a lot of folks, mm-hmm. right? And I, I think they're using particular tropes to try to get people to go, hmm, maybe I'm actually not down with racial equality because maybe you're not even down with that, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all are over here riding on boats and taking vacations. Meanwhile, racism still exists. So therefore, you must be corrupt. It's like, mm-hmm. well, wait a minute now. Follow this logic for right. a second. Um, At the same time, right? I run an organization. I run two of them. I'm responsible for the budget of that organization. I'm responsible for raising money in that organization. I know where every dollar goes in that organization. And I can tell you running organizations is really hard. Sometimes you have people that don't know what they're doing. Sometimes you miss deadlines. Sometimes it's like a regular natural thing. And so for me, just I haven't been in this organization for about seven years. So I don't know all the background and all of that. But as a person who's close to all of that and hearing and reading all of the things that I see, I can be honest and say, I think that there are nefarious things at work here. And how does it make me feel to Mm -hmm. see all of that and know that people expect activists to be like martyrs in rags and things like that? Mm I think it's a result of people not actually being connected to what it means to make change and who does it and how they do it. I know a lot of people that do change work and don't get paid for it. And I know a lot of people for whom change work is their work. Mm -hmm. So I think it's complicated, but I think what's more complicated is that we're not as literate as we should be around how to understand what it is that we read and why. I wish that we could be more understanding of each other because you expect the white power structure to be against you, yeah, right? Because that's Correct. what you're fighting against. Correct. You're fighting against systemic racism. You Correct. expect that. You don't expect it from your own people. But that's the strategy, right? If you look at 2020, the thing that was unique about 2020 that was different than 2013 is that white people in mass supported this movement. Mm-hmm. 2013 was... Uh, Trayvon. Trayvon, mm-hmm. okay. Right? And so... I think that that was actually really scary to folk. And so when you look at the ways in which folk have leveraged strategies to dismantle movements, they've learned pretty quickly, like white folks can't just come out and be like, can't do hoses and dogs, right? (laughs) That's done. They have to figure out how to create discord amongst each other. And this movement is wildly popular amongst black people. I think it's like 98% of black people support Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. So in order to dislodge support, you have to think about how do we make white folks not trust it, but also how do we make black folks delegitimize a black movement? 
that's not new. This was happening with Malcolm. Yeah. Right. Coin tell pro. Of course. Of course. This was happening with the Panthers. Right. We've seen this over and over again. And I, I hope that what we would do this time around is say, well, y'all better come up with something new. No, they did. <laughs> yeah. they did. You know what they did? They did this. You know? Because I don't even believe most of these people that be on social media with these gripes, I don't know how many of them are actually real. They, they bots. Mean, you know what I mean? I think bots. I, 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 I don't get me wrong. There are a lot of real ones, but I think it starts with some bull****. Mm. Like it starts with somebody trying to cause, you know, problems. But that's why we need vehicles that are about building our power politically because we see all of the ways in which they try to attack us being powerful in decision making. I mean, that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. Bots were operating, disinformation and misinformation was operating during the election, right? Telling people the Klan is at the polling place, mm -hmm. telling people uh, you've been disqualified to vote, right? These are all things that are attacking our communities mm -hmm. directly, specifically, and on purpose. And so that's why we've built a vehicle to address those things. So again, if people want to check us out, blackfutureslab.org and take the black census. Tell us how you're experiencing the Rona. Tell us where you take political action. Tell us if your wages are going up and down at blackcensus.org. All right, we have more with Alicia Garza. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We still have civil rights activists and author in the building, Alicia Garza, Charlemagne. I, I want to talk to you too about political leadership because I don't feel like there's any truth to power <laughs> coming from our political leadership whatsoever. <laughs> even bad. even in moments like you know, every I, I, everybody was you know talking about what Cory Senator Cory Booker said during the Supreme Court confirmation hearing. I loved what he said too, mm -hmm. but I still feel like it was a little bit disingenuous because you can't speak about racial progress while you're watching this sister be attacked by all these races. <laughs> you see the bigotry, so at least call that out first mm -hmm. before you you love on her. So it's never like, mm -hmm. or even when I saw him tweet that this is gonna make America better, it's still a 6-3 conservative majority, Corey. <laughs> like, how about y'all expand the Supreme Court and add four, you know, Jackson's on the Supreme Court. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's just all a little disingenuous. It's never truthful. This is why I love you, Sean. Well, what were your thoughts on, on the questioning and everything, too? <laughs> well, I was thinking about you because I was watching the confirmation hearings and I was remembering also, at a certain point, I think y'all had the vice president Kamala Harris. in yes, conversation yeah. and we're running her down, mm -hmm. rightfully so. Mm -hmm. We need to have real conversations about what progress is and isn't. And I think what is hard about our political system is that it is a series of compromises, negotiations, and a lot of pomp and circumstance. Mm -hmm. And people like procedure over progress. Yes, <laughs> right? yes, yes, yes. Um, this is why we have not prosecuted very many people who tried to overthrow That's the right. government. Yet um, we have people serving more time in jail for weed. That's right. I've been watching these hearings and I think in this country we have a real challenge around symbolism and substance. Mm -hmm. We really love the symbol of the first. Yes. Right? And you'll remember even under the Obama presidency, people were so caught up in the symbolism, it was really difficult to hold him accountable to the substance. There was some good stuff that he did. There was also a lot of pushing that was necessary. He was not for BLM, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm, it actually mm -hmm. took a long tour around the world, talking to people in Europe about how we needed to stop screaming and start doing other things. Mm -hmm. It's like progress actually takes pressure and it takes power. You're absolutely right that on the Supreme Court, we will still have a conservative majority mm -hmm. and that we have to figure out what we're gonna do about that at a moment where our rights are being whittled away by the hour. That's right. You're absolutely right that to say that we've made so much progress and we can't get protection or expansion of voting rights when we can't get any kind of reform, much less transformation of the criminal legal system, mm -hmm. when women's rights are being attacked, mm -hmm. right? And human rights are being attacked at the state and local level we now have half of the states in this country who are severely restricted access to abortion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? We can't be mealy-mouthed and say, putting a person in a seat is progress when we have all those things happening at the same time. And 
I think we also can acknowledge that all progress has to start somewhere. What was at the front of my mind was, I think it was relieving for her. You know, when you, you're about to cry, but you know you need to just keep it together. I think the what he was trying to do was actually be like, just focus in. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to get through this. They're coming at you. I'm going to give you a little bit of room to breathe. And you could actually see her body change. But when he was saying all of those things to her, like, you remind me of my ancestors. He was calling her sister. Mm-hmm. You know, he was saying all of these things to her that I think were important to see. And I think were important for her to be able to persevere. She needed that. She needed that no, she oh, yeah, did. she needed that. I just be one real truth to power. Like, don't Ooh. say things like, I am shocked by what I'm hearing these people didn't think about it and be like, actually, I'm not shocked. Corey, you've been in there a long time. That's politics. Exactly. And you know, Corey is the one who will always do that thing about, <laughs> drives me nuts, I'm sorry. It's a thing about how he's like friendly and friends with like some of the worst human beings on the planet. Yes, we ain't got time you know, for that no more. I'm mm-hmm. like, these people are actually like not good people. Listen, they talk about the death of democracy and they talk about our democracy is at stake. And for the first time in my life, I'm actually seeing it. I'm witnessing it like, yo, they're really turning turning back the clock. But it's like, yo, nobody's governing like it. And I see what's happening now. They want us to go out there and vote this year. Vote like democracy depends on it. When y'all gonna govern like democracy depends on it? Yeah, and it's not enough to say we disagree. We actually also have to say this won't be tolerated. Yes. I was talking to somebody <laughs> yesterday and they were saying to me, um, do, do I think Democrats are too bold in their legislation and too bold in the things they ask for. And I was like, well, what's bolder than rolling back voting rights legislation? What's bolder than, you know, over 200 GOP senators, you know, voting to get rid of Roe versus Wade? (laughs) Like, those are bold. Mm -hmm. Like, how bold is that? You're actually stripping white rights away from people. It's like, so it's like, what what does that mean when we say we're too bold just because we're asking for our civil liberties? They're bold in taking them away. Well, that's one of the things that was so important to us at the lab about doing this black census is we actually designed a black agenda and the black agenda was developed to create and design policy that we could agree on that would move our lives forward. When you talk about what's bold, we actually need to be a lot bolder. Mm -hmm. We need to actually be able to say. Everybody deserves to have health care. Mm-hmm. Everybody deserves to have a roof over their head. And we are going to make that happen. One of the things is that's really important to me that we start to understand is that when it comes to figuring out what is our agenda, there's the agenda of the Democratic Party that is a complicated beast in and of itself. But it is largely being advised by white consultants who are looking to white folks in the suburbs <laughs> to help get their candidates over mm. over the hump. And so what they're doing is they're saying it's too bold for white suburban folk. Because <laughs> when you go into our communities, people aren't like, this is bold. People are like, this is basic. So what I want people who are listening to do is to get involved in an organization that can help build the kind of agenda that is basic, that are the things that we all deserve. You should get involved with us at Black Futures Lab. Love it. And take the Black Census so you can tell us what you want, what you deal with every single day, and what you want to see done about it. Do you think they even care about Black voters anymore? The Democratic Party? Or do you think they're focused on that blue-collar white worker in middle America? I think they're focused on the blue-collar white worker in middle America. And I think that has always been true. We are the backbone of that party. And we should treat it as such, meaning we should take it over. We need to take it over at the city level, county level. We need to take it over at the state level. Mm-hmm. And we need to take over the national apparatus. All right. my, my, my last question, are there things about yourself that you learned over the past couple of years that impact how you do your work now? Yeah. What I've continued to learn about myself is how much love I have for Black folk. Mm. I believe in us in a deep way. And in spite so, of. And because of. Mm. I know we're not all on the same page all the time, but I actually find a lot of beauty in our difference. And the way that we have chosen to survive has left a stamp on us that is difficult and beautiful. And the second thing I've learned about myself is soft heart 
tough boundaries. You asked me earlier if all the haters and the criticisms Scrutiny. make mm-hmm. me not want to do this work. Yeah. And um, no, because I've made a commitment to always keeping my heart open. I love us in such a deep way. I'm not giving up. However, you sometimes you have to stop people in their tracks, right? right. I can still love you, but what you're not finna do is, <laughs> right? That's right. Like, I, I'm not accountable to your opinions. If we're not in relationship, it's like, what do you care? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If I don't get to tell you how I feel about you, you don't get to tell me how you feel about me. My six-year-old uh, daughter repeats all the time. I don't even know where she got this from. She literally will say, everybody's different and that's okay. I love that. <laughs> she says that all the time. She's like, everybody, everybody's that. different and that's okay. So if you want to be in a place where you can be you, all three dimensions of you, come and join us at theblackfuturelab.org. <laughs> Also, please, please, please take the Black Census 2022. We'd love to have you, and we'd love to have you as a partner. Join in at blackcensus.org and hit us up. Holla at blackfutureslab.org. All right, and make sure you subscribe to Alicia Garza's podcast, Lady Don't Take No. Hey, and hey. Uh, pick up her book, The Purpose of Power, How We Come Together When We Fall Apart. All right. We Thank have Alicia Garza. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Always. Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Bridgerton. It's about time. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is The Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, if you don't know, uh, I was supposed to play the main part in Bridgerton. Boy, a lie don't care who tell it, right? Shonda Rhimes called me up and said, Hey, what are you doing? I said, I can't right now. I just had a baby, but maybe next time. One of the biggest lies ever told on The Breakfast Club from DJ Envy. Probably second to your beard being real. Bridgerton (laughs) Bridgerton season two is out right now. Have you seen it, Charlamagne? Are you up on Bridgerton? I ain't never seen Bridgerton in season one. Okay, well, the women love it. Your wife don't watch it? I don't think so, no. Really? I ain't, I ain't never seen no Bridgerton right. on in the house. It's, I mean, you know you know how it is with your wife. Your wife would be watching shows, and you usually get caught up watching them. I ain't get caught up watching no Bridgerton yet. Well, Bridgerton landed the number one spot with 193 million hours viewed, making it the most viewed right. English language TV title in the season two premiere weekend. So uh, Bridgerton is out. So if, you're, if you're, your ladies are uh, watching Bridgerton this week, and find something else to do. Well, drop on the clues, Mom, for Shonda Rhimes then. Boy, Shonda don't miss, do she? That's Shonda Shore. Right? Yep. Shonda don't miss. Shonda Rhimes, yeah. Now, uh, Kodak Black, he uh, says 50 Cent and Tyler Perry. I'm watching. He said, I got movie ideas. I want to pitch to Tyler, uh, Tyler Perry or 50 Cent. Let's go. If you know me <laughs> and can see past the internet antics, uh, you already know that I'm very intellectual, young man. So with that being He's said, right. I have some very interesting scripts. I would pay whatever to see Kodak Black talking to my dear in a movie. Okay, imagine Kodak Black being my dear's bad little grandson in a movie. Okay, can you imagine? My goodness. Can you imagine? I would love it. Super Gremlin. I would love it. Now, little baby, he's uh, teased some new music. He flipped a, a classic Drake and Hove collab. Oh, okay. Stand out the internet. Share the stage with Billy Eilish. Turn it in a given time. Personal partners, pillow talking, cause I got rich without them. Only thing they should be saying is, baby, keep it silent. We ain't even deep as we used to be. This shit slick divided. Bro, I ain't got no hustle or nothing. Yeah, you lost me when you said classic Drake and Hove collab. I was like, Drake and Hove ain't got no classic well, collab. It's the Pound Cake. Pound Cake is a dope record, though. Very dope record. Mm-hmm. Because that one record they did when Drake, when Jay tried to make everybody stop wearing Timberlands. Remember that? No. You remember that record? <laughs> I can't remember the name of the record. It was Drake and Jay-Z, though. And Jay told everybody to stop wearing Timberlands. I'm like, what? He told New York to stop wearing Timberlands? He told the world. Whoever <laughs> he was rapping to on that record. Oh, it didn't work. N- not at all. No. Well, right. That's one of his only mishaps. All right. So we're looking for a, a 2022 takeover, summer takeover by Little Baby. Now, Quest Love. I mean, Quest Love did win an Oscar. He definitely did. So uh, moment got stepped on because of the slap, but he definitely won an Oscar. So he was on a Tonight Show and he spoke about that that moment and the Will Smith, Chris Brown, uh, Chris Brown, Chris Rock situation. A minute when the commercial break was happening, I was just in my. (laughs) Yeah. So when I opened my eyes, I didn't realize, like, why is everyone so quiet? And as I'm walking to the stage, I'm kind of putting two and two together. And I realized that that was a real moment like 
maybe three seconds before I spoke words. But yeah. in my mind, they're just doing a sketch or whatever, and I'm just like, okay, Amir, remember to thank your mom, your dad, and thank you. You know, like, yeah. so I was not present at all. He was meditating, he said. He had no idea what was going on. I believe him. He blocked the room out. Yeah, because, you know, that's his moment. So, you know, he was nominated for an award. So at a, at a moment like that, you're just into what you're going to say if you win. I totally can see that. Totally can see it. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? Man, four after the hour, we're going to talk doo-doo. Hmm? Okay? Four after the hour, we're going to talk doo-doo. Who's doo-doo? Don't worry about whose doo-doo it is. You just be here to find out. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. All right? Doo-doo, when we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. I teamed up with Zyrtec for this allergy relief message. Springtime brings vibrancy to the air and pollen. So I take Zyrtec when allergy symptoms start. Save the tissues and live vibrantly with Zyrtec. Starts working at hour one and stays strong day after day. WWPR FM HD1 New York. An iHeart Radio station. Let me put a little bit of the Breakfast Club up in your lifestyle. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. Make sure you tell them to watch out for Florida, man. Florida, man. Florida. The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Yes, you are a donkey. A Florida man attacked an ATM for a very strange reason. It gave him too much money. Florida man is arrested after deputies say he rigged the door to his home in an attempt to electrocute his pregnant wife. Police arrested an Orlando man for attacking a flamingo. It's the breakfast club, bitches. Donkey of the day. With Charlemagne the God. I don't know why y'all keep letting him get y'all like this. Well, donkey of the day for Monday, March 30th goes to a Miami man named William Carroll. First of all, what does your Uncle Shala always say about the great state of Florida? The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. That is a fact. But one thing I don't do enough is salute the great city of Miami. Drop one of the clues bombs from Miami. The 305. One of the greatest places on the planet. We don't discuss Miami enough. I know y'all like to go down there for the weather and the beaches and the licking. Okay, in the nightlife, but Miami has contributed so much to the culture of hip hop. Drop on the clues bombs for Uncle Luke and the Two Live Crew. <laughs> Top five rap group of all time. Uncle Luke is a whole legend and should always be respected as such. Y'all wouldn't have parental advisory stickers on albums if it wasn't for Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke, you know, w- was considered obscene, okay, and went against Congress to fight for the First Amendment. Artist, freedom of speech, he really fought for that, okay? America labeled him explicit, which led to the mandatory parental advisory sticker you see on music now with offensive content, okay? That impacted all musical genres, by the way, not just hip-hop, all right? He fought for the right to tell big booty hoes, you ain't nothing but a hoochie mama. Hood red, hood red, you hear me? He fought for the right to tell Asian women all around the world, me so horny. Uncle Luke, you hear me? Uncle Luke fought for the right to tell you that Cap D is coming. And at some point after he comes, you're going to have to put your hands up high, your ass down low, and drop that boom boom to the floor. That's right, don't even touch it. I still got them knees, you hear what I'm saying? That was a good era. Don't play no more. That's okay. what I'm saying. Don't play no more. That was a good era. Have we all grown now? Yes. Do we all realize that, you know, the music was misogynistic and sexist? Yes. But can we all admit that problematic music slapped? Okay. <laughs> and it wouldn't be the same without the toxicity. And you are a liar. If you say you hear that music now and it doesn't make you feel good, okay? Drop one of the clues bombs for Uncle Luke. All right? I still listen to I Wanna Rock right now. I literally mean right now. Like, that's my joint, okay? This man, Uncle Luke, had us screaming the color of feces for no damn reason, okay? Proudly screaming out what the color of feces was just because some of y'all doo-doo might be green, okay? Sometimes. Might even be a little hint of red, depending on if you got hemorrhoids or how much fun you had in the bedroom the night before. But it's universally known that doo-doo is brown because of the legend named Lufa Campbell. And that's why we are gathered here today, ladies and gentlemen, to discuss doo-doo, okay? See, William Carroll is a robber who is currently facing charges of armed robbery and battery. 
See, a woman was walking her dog in Miami's Edgewater neighborhood. She was picking up her dog's poop when William Carroll pulled up with a knife. No need to listen to me because I need to catch my breath anyway. Okay, but let's go to NBC6 South Florida for the report, please. What was supposed to be a quick dog walk Monday night turned into a violent attack. Police say a woman was attacked and robbed on her way back home after walking her dog. She stopped on the stairs to her condo to pick up the dog's waist when a man allegedly came from behind with a knife and strangled her, then allegedly stole her backpack and wallet. Police caught Carol a few blocks away, out of breath, and they say with the victim's credit cards nearby. He told detectives he didn't do it, but police say he didn't realize he was wearing one of the biggest pieces of evidence, which came from the dog, literally. The police report states a brownish stain was seen on the <laughs> defendant's shirt matching the dog poop from the scene. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. William Carroll is in jail because, number one, he's a robber, but number two, because of doo-doo. All right? This woman had the wherewithal or maybe, you know, just in her fighting a little, she got enough doo-doo on him for cops to notice he had a dog poop stain on his shirt. First of all, you're not just about to blend in when you got doo-doo on you. Okay, even if the clothes you are wearing are indeed a doo-doo brown color, the smell, my G, okay, the odor. We've all had dog poop on our shoe at some point in life. You can't escape that funky-ass fragrance, all right? Think about the time you had to take uh, cleaning, doo-doo off your shoes in life. Mm -mm. So imagine walking around with it on your shirt. You throw the whole shirt away. Clearly, William, 62 years old, robbing folks at knife point, couldn't afford to throw his shirt away. But the fact you just decided to go to the cultural institution known as Pizza Hut with doo-doo on your shirt. Sir, respect yourself, but also respect the home of the Book It program. You can't just walk up in Pizza Hut with doo-doo on your shirt and get you a personal pan pie and keep it moving. And furthermore, how stink are you on a regular basis that you don't even notice you got doo-doo on your shirt? Not only did he have doo-doo on his shirt, the officers found the victim's belongings and the knife. So it's an open and shut case. Now, William Carroll is currently in the Turner Gofield Knight Correctional Center. All you brothers in that facility who are listening to The Breakfast Club this morning, you're listening to Charlemagne, the God delivered his donkey of the day. If you don't see that man, William Carroll, and say, don't stop, pop that bussy. Let me see you doo doo brown. If y'all not calling that man doo doo brown for the rest of his life, for the rest of his stay in that facility, then y'all have collectively failed Miami Dade County. I'm not saying harass the man, I'm just saying his life, your entertainment, okay? Y'all just trying to kill some time behind those walls and him ending up there because one, he made the poor choice to rob and steal, and two, because of doo doo! Mm -mm -mm. It's just too much comedy gold to not let the jokes fly. Please give William Carroll, AKA Doo Doo Brown, the biggest hee haw. <laughs> <sighs> you tired, man? A little bit. You sweating? A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> let like that goddamn, let cool. that damn, uh, that's that pop, that scarred fly one more time, though. Uh oh. Go, 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 go. Get low. Oh, get low. Oh, low. Megan got nothing on you. Keep going. I'm glad you know. I'm glad you know. Who's your mama? Why can't y'all yeah, just admit? Y'all yeah, be out here judging mama? these kids. Listen. Y'all be out here trying to act so woke, judging these kids for the content of their music, and that's what we grew up on, okay? You need oxygen, bro. Our era <laughs> was so toxic and so problematic, but so damn fun, okay? All right. Do you even have those classic tunes without the toxicity? Huh? Drink some water. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, all right. Okay? Don't think I'm not fine. <laughs> all right. I am fine. You hear me? All right. I am 43 you with the knees of a 41-year-old. Look like you need a little <laughs> look like you need a little bang gay. <laughs> what? I did say pop that bussy. You know what? So who been gay? <laughs> you know what? Up next is Ask C and E. 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, call C and E right now. We'll help you out with your problems. Uh, whatever it may be. You having problems in that relationship, call us up. We'll help you. 800-585-1051 is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. What's going on? You, you can call me. 
time to ask CNE. Ooh, let's get it. Let's ask get it, get Charlemagne it. and DJ Envy anything. Call up now. 800 585 1051. The Breakfast Club. It's that time again. Ask Charlemagne and DJ Envy anything. Pick it up, pick it up, pick, pick it, it up. up. It's time to ask CNE. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for Ask C and E. If you got a question, you can call us up right now. And uh, hello, who's this? What's up, though? This Sean. Sean, what's up, man? What's your question for C and E, brother? Oh uh, man, so listen, I went I went to the nail salon with my girl. She wanted me to get a pedicure. I mean, I've had pedicures before, but we went to the nail salon, and there wasn't enough female nail stylists. Uh huh. So, like, she had a, a guy doing her pedicure, and I had no choice but to have a guy do my pedicure. What's the problem, What's wrong sir? With that? What's the problem? I, I kind of feel gay because <laughs> cause when he got to the part where he was twisting my foot and smacking my leg, you, you, you enjoyed it. it. You liked it. I, I, it felt better than Ling Ling usually do it. You know so so I, I don't know why you blaming that on the guy. If you feel gay, it's because you're probably gay. I just, I, no, I'm not gay. I just went with my girl. Yeah, I was like, okay, so you're, you're bi. You might be fluid. You might like guys and girls. Like, cause nah, I, man. If, but that, you think about it like this. When athletes get massages after a game, it's usually a man that, a man that does it, right? That's right. I've, so you don't I, have to feel a way about that, brother. You was with your girl. You can get sports I massages. Did, I just I enjoyed it a lot more. It's oh. the only thing. Let me did tell you, you, did, did me, you take his number after, though? No. All right, then you could. The, the, the other day, my 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 cousin, my cousin Tony, salute to Tony. Uh, you know he's a trainer, and Tony was doing something on my back to loosen up my muscles. Now, once did my penis jump? Now, okay. Did you, did you, no, no, did your no, penis, no, penis jump, sir? Jump. No, no. Penis but you said jump. you enjoyed it. I didn't. En- I enjoyed getting my back loosened because he was loosening my back. It had nothing to do with the fact that I'm uh, attracted to a man. So I don't yeah, know what to tell you, sir. Another man rubbing your foot. I already felt a little weird. But it's just, okay. It's okay. Next time, tell him to rub it with some Ben Gay. Now, now let me ask you a question. Are you going to request him next time you go, sir? I don't know. Oh my God! <laughs> By the way, man, y'all got to stop Goodbye, this. Man. Y'all got to stop this because like, we like, we say it all the time on this radio. Envy just said it. These basketball players, these football players, they get rubbed down by trainers and get sports massages by men. Stop it. That's just silly. You, you liked it. You liked it. You liked it. Hello, who's this? Jessica. Hey, Jessica. What's your question for CNE? Okay, so my husband, basically, we've been not dating. We've been on each other since we was in the sixth grade. I'm 31. Mm-hmm. And we finally got married maybe about four years ago. Okay. So basically... Why are you judging him? Want, I, what do you mean? I don't like I'm how you're judging your husband just because he decided to marry you four years ago after being along there. Cause I, okay, it's... no, 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 no. We went to college. We went to separate colleges. And we finally decided to just make it happen for well not four years ago we've been together for like six years okay so we've been messing around since we've been in high school okay so we've been knowing each other like i said since we've been in sixth grade true so what's your question so so okay i don't i don't think he's cheating i'm just trying to figure out why is he doing the things that he's doing what like, is he well, doing he booked the trip to vegas and he said he was going but he booked it on the weekend of mother's day mother's day weekend and he booked it. We, we're on the same credit card. And I asked him, I'm like, so you booked your trip? He said, yeah, I booked it last night. The credit card statement said you booked it two weeks ago. So mm-hmm. why are you just not telling me now? Like, we both work. You got to watch your kids because we got two kids together. I'm like, you got to pay out some more for your kids to go. Every well, time look, I go out of town. How you know he's not booking you a secret trip and, 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 inv- and taking you for That's Mother's right. Day That's you right. You ruining, ruining the surprise. surprise. No, you ruining no, the damn surprise I, with your insecurities. No, I'm not ruining the surprise because I asked him, I asked him, could I go to the trip? He was like, no. First off, I got some Delta credits for him. He decided to book it on Spirit. That's his dumb fault. Whoa. Two, I got a credit for Airbnb. He decided to book So now he wasted money. Now... I'm like... I ain't got nothing to do with this. I stay out of people's business, man. <laughs> okay? My mama said, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. It just, it all just, I can tell you is black men don't cheat. Is yeah. he black? Okay. I don't think he's cheating. Like, we, is he I'm black? Like, yes, we're black. Okay. I don't know nothing about this. Yeah, but, you know, it is Mother's Day. He might have been trying to surprise you when you ruined the surprise. I just seem an odd that, you know, you, you have 
children from this man. You've been together with him that long. Mother's Day is coming around, and he's not planning something for you on Mother's Day. That just seems strange. Now, I ain't going to front. The whole Spirit Airlines, I'd be a little upset, mama. That's and, the part that should make you upset. And, and, and by the way, by the way, just maybe you should a- a- applaud that man because... Clearly, he got a whole other family in Vegas, and he's going to spend Mother's Day with his new family. Okay? He done spent a bunch of Mother's Days with you. Okay? So you should applaud that man that he get to go spend at least one Goodbye, with his Jessica. new family. Good I don't see the problem. Okay? What kind of advice is that? No, I was just hypothetically speaking. I was minding my business. I wasn't oh. even talking. I just was I was really just talking out loud to myself. Oh my god. I wasn't even talking to her. As C and E, 800-585-1051. Jessica, I mean, since you already ruined the surprise, you should really just confront the man and tell him how you feel. Like it's effed up that you go into Vegas on Mother's Day without me and leave me with the kids on Mother's Day. And I'm sure he'll have a better uh answer for you. Hopefully. All right. As C and E, call us now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You know, it's that- Charlemagne and DJ Envy anything. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, bro. It's time to ask C and E. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Angela Yee is out, so we're holding it down. Ask C and E. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Matt from Jersey. What's up, Matt, man? What's your question for C and E? Nah, I got a cool question. I ain't want to be on the radio too long, but y'all had a snippet. A long time ago, y'all played a uh, Charlemagne saying, nothing can stop me, I'm on this butt. <laughs> I want to know what happened to that. That, that never happened. Yeah, that put me in tears. Why would you just lie that like happened. that? Why would you just lie like that? that? <laughs> Why would you just lie like that? And then you said facts. Nah, people don't forget, B. That never happened. <laughs> Goodbye, Matt, man. Yeah. What, 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 that, just never, that just never happened. It's fake news. Chris, what up, Chris? What's up, buddy? What's your question for CD, brother? Hey, all right, so listen, I run a paint business in Sarasota, Florida, Caliber Country, Clean Concepts and Painting, right? right. Okay. My goal is to create a black business of elite painters, mm-hmm. right? I love area. it. So what I do is I reach back to a lot of my brothers in the community, catch that when I was in the street that I dealt with, you know, to try to get them a new direction, a new route. You know, okay. A lot of want to get out of prison or, you know, get out of whatever, jail or whatever. They want to try to find another route. Cause a lot of them don't want to return to the street. So I try to create a platform for that. Okay. I have a brother that I'm pretty cool with. He's been working with me about maybe a month. It's completely not working out. This guy can't put doorknobs on correct. After I instruct him how to take them off, bro, and tell him to put them back on, he leaves the guts out, put doorknobs on backwards, just <laughs> everything. <laughs> so what's the problem, sir? Are you calling us to tell us how you should fire him? You got to fire him. You got to let him go, bro. Right. Right. That's what I need to do. How do I go about doing that without hurting the brother's feelings? You want to call him on three you know right now? We'll help no, you no, out. no. We're not going to do that. We can help her out right yeah, now. You're a boss, sir. <laughs> you hurt the brother's feelings right. by telling him that, you know, uh, you're moving in another direction <laughs> with your company. <laughs> okay. And you should also encourage him to like, man, you know, get better at his craft. Yeah. Call him right now. On because three. because 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 once you fire him for not doing a good job, all he's going to do is try to get a job someplace else and he's not going to do a good job there and he's going to keep getting fired and he's going to wonder why he keep getting fired and it's because he's not doing a good job. So somebody has to tell him he's not doing a good job. Well, maybe being better. a handyman is just not for him. Like, I can't be a handyman. I don't know how to put a doorknob on. I don't know how to put a doorbell on. I don't know none of that. Maybe that's just not for him. Right. Why don't you call him right now? Maybe. We'll help you out. Maybe, maybe. Man, don't you get yeah, no man. damn. Um, Call him right now. No, you, Charlemagne that, and Envy. That's against get... some type of laws. I know it is. You can't just fire somebody over the radio like Why that. Why not? That's his friend. No, you can't. <laughs> Let him. <laughs> don't listen. Don't listen to Envy. What's his hey, name? Listen. My whole thing is this, man. Listen, I'm trying to keep him encouraged. I don't want to discourage him from trying to continue to do what he's trying to do and stay out of the street. But working with me is just not working, bro. He's costing me money. You know what I mean? I got to go back in a lot of times and fix it after I pay him. You know what I'm saying? And then he's like thinking that he should get more. You know, he thinks he should get like a thousand dollars a week. Okay, like, you gotta fire him, bro. You gotta let him go. Yeah, let him go today. Give him yeah, a two week notice today. Tell him, tell me, good. Take his vacation time. Give him two weeks to find a new job, and then he's out. And I got one more piece of advice. Uh, encourage him to get more training. You know what I mean? Like, go back to trade school. To yeah, do something. Like, right. tell him go back to trade school or something and get more training. Good luck, brother. Hello, who's this? Man, this is Pre from Omaha, Nebraska. What's up, DJ Envy and Charlamagne? Peace, King. You the wildest in Nebraska? Man, no, I ain't the wildest in Nebraska. I got smart. I'm the smartest in Nebraska. There you go. That's what I like to hear, King. That's what's what your, I like to up? hear. What's your question for CNE? So, man, my question for CNE, so me and my baby mama, we broke up. We've been together for like six, seven years. We broke up. It's about to be a year. Uh, Shawty want me to move back in my lease up in September, but DJ Envy, you know, I'll be trying to get on that real estate shit. So I end up, I mean, sorry for the cussing, but I end up renting uh, rent out my house. And then, 
to make some money and I was gonna move back in with her. But she was like, no, nah, I wake up every morning sad. She wanna do her thing. But then, you know, I had to get an apartment. So now it's like, should I give her my apartment, move back in? We got two kids. Or should I just continue to go to therapy and learn myself and understand myself? So I'm trying to become a better man. I probably didn't do her the best. So, you know what I mean? I started getting real on that mental health. And Charmaine, no lie though, you did like encourage me and kind of motivate me to take that step forward. And that's what it is. That's what I like to hear, my brother. I wouldn't move back in unless your relationship was that good. And if you have doubts right now, I wouldn't do it. I would, I would, I would continue yeah, to work on yourself. Like, Make sure you good first before you clear it. Because when it's time to move in, you're gonna be ready to really, really, really move in. Right now, you like halfway in, halfway out. You almost want to move in because of the money. You like if I move in, I can save some money and I can make some money at the crib. But that money ain't gonna, that ain't gonna help your sanity. And that's why she didn't want me to move in because she was like, you're just trying to make some money. But then at the same time, she was like, you're only good for providing because I work as a firefighter, I work as a paramedic, and I also own my own electrical company. Shout out to Black Power Redevelopers in the city. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like she only be trying to be with me because I'm doing so well. And I just feel like she ain't really grown yet into like maturing and stuff like that. But no cap though, she don't want the therapy with me and like anger management class and stuff like that. But she still just be... You know what I mean? So you can't you so 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 you know you can't you can't force it. You know what I'm saying? I think one thing that we all try to do, we don't accept things, you know, once we realize it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? For I do that for my own sanity. I let things be what they are. So I think that y'all should just continue to grow, continue to yeah. evolve. Y'all might grow together, y'all might grow apart, but whatever it is, you gotta accept it. I do love the fact that you out there doing the work on yourself, my brother. Yeah, you'll know when it's time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So until that, until then, I mean, it's a hot boy summer. Go add Black <laughs> Power Electrical IG. You know what I mean? I'm about to take the page off See? private. He wasn't ready. Not an ugly man. You know what I mean? Other than that, I appreciate y'all, man. I'm going to get that out of here. I respect that. You See, get... he wasn't ready. No, he is ready. He out there doing the work on himself. You know what I'm saying? And that's what these women need to realize. How you second about to move in with your baby mom? To... Nah, F that. It's hot boy summer. Because he's down. accepting for his own sanity that things just are what they are. And he's not attempting to force it. That's it. That's it. He should go enjoy yourself this summer. And she should go enjoy herself this summer. Like I said, they either going to grow together or they going to grow apart. One of the two. All right. Well, that was C&E 800-585-1051. All right. When we come back, we got the rumor report. We'll tell you about Rod Wave. He's doing something great for his community. And we'll talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Man, too Club. many slow songs, man. Put Doo Doo Brown back on. You stupid. All right, let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Rod Wave. It's time, time, time. She's spilling the tea. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on the Breakfast Club. Now Rod Wave notices that gas prices are going through the roof, so he wanted to give some gas relief to his hometown of Florida. So this is what he did. Gas highs, f- hey, St. Petersburg, Florida, St. Pete, 727, giving away free gas April 9th out of Sunoco on 34th, right before you get on the bridge, April 9th, giving away 25,000 free gas, so April 9th, 12 o'clock, pull up, get you some free gas, make it to a free full tank, going on by I love that idea. And you know what's so crazy? I've been trying to figure out a way to do that. I didn't know if we could do it through gas cards or whatever, whatever. But I love that idea, Rod Wave. I love that idea so much, I'm going to do the same damn thing. Well, I wouldn't necessarily do that. I think I would. I, you would think it out a little better. Like the gas cards, I think it's better. Because if not, you're going to have thousands of people out there to get free gas and mm. 25,000 to go fast. So if you do gas cards, that way they, everybody, can, they, yeah, you have they a, can go to whatever yeah. gas station they want to go to. It's a certain you, amount. You do more gift cards that way. I mean, it's kind of like buying out the bar, right, though? Like, you just, you know, you put a certain amount on the bar and then yeah, but the when it's with gone, the bar, it's gone. The difference with the bar is you're in a club, so it's the people that's there. Now you're talking uh, about the yeah. world coming to that gas station and people uh, fighting. And, but if you give more cards, you ain't got to worry about that. And they can go to any gas station they want. When is it? When is it? When is it again? I think he's doing his... Uh, He's April nineteenth. I think that's the yeah. That's the date my book comes out. But yeah, April nineteenth. I want to see. Um, I want to see how that works out. But I do want to do something similar. Mm-hmm. I want to do it. Z ninety three jams. I'll be hollering at y'all in South Carolina. I want to do it in Jersey too, though. Mm-hmm. I'll be with you with the Jersey one. Mm-hmm. Do something big. All right, now Lamar Odom. He compares his uh, Will Smith drama to his Khloe Kardashian marriage. He says he feels like he should have protected his wife like Will Smith did Jada. He said, had I protected my wife versus mentally, emotionally, and spiritually hurting her, 
I may be still be married. Oh, see, that's this. See, I like that. I like that language. See, because mm-hmm. as we discussed yesterday, protecting your wife isn't just about your fist. Protecting your wife is really doing the work on your sh- yourself to show up as the man that you need to be. And that starts with mental, emotional and spiritual work. Yeah, he says uh, Will loves his wife. He says, I do not condone violence against anyone. He just said, Will loves Jada. And I was told love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. But also um, to that point, what we saw Sunday, and I can't believe we're still talking about this, but it is a larger conversation to be had. What we saw Sunday is somebody who needs to do more mental, emotional and spiritual work. So they don't project their pain on somebody the way Will Smith did to Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Candy. Candy from uh, Real Housewives, of course, escaped. She was on The Real and talked about some suicidal thoughts she had as a teenager and how it uh, played out. But when I was in middle school, I thought about taking my own life. No. Yeah, I don't really like talking about it because it's like very emotional for me. I really wanted to go through the motions. My my mother at the time, she had a gun. And you know how you're a kid, you go through Uh. that stuff. So I knew where she kept it and I had plans to use it but whatever reason God made her put it somewhere else because it wasn't where she normally kept it I didn't even talk to my mom about this really oh but the point of this of me saying it is if I had done that at that time think of all the wonderful things that I would have missed out on mm. definitely yeah. sending candy healing energy yeah shout to candy and that is your rumor reports all right all right, get your request in the People's Choice Mix, 800-585-1051. Let us know what you want to hear, and we'll get your request on. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Peace to the planet. Charlemagne the God here with news from one of. They just partnered with the Grammy Awards for exclusive NFTs, and you can win a pair of tickets to fly out to next year's Grammys simply by claiming a free NFT at oneof.com. For rules and to claim your free NFT, visit oneof.com by 7 p.m. J Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We got a shout to Alicia Garza for joining us this morning. Yeah, salute to Alicia Garza. And as she said quite a few times, uh, make sure you go to blackcensus.org and fill out uh, the Black Census Project. All right. Now, when we come back, we got the positive notice. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Just want to remind you, June nineteenth, mm. Father's Day weekend, my car show out in Texas. Texas versus New York. Trade the truth versus Envy. Uh, so many different people. Shout out to Mr. Rogers. Uh, pull up, man. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Bring the kids out. There's gonna be games. Uh, Can't believe you about to embarrass New York like this. No, we now. And, and Salute- I'm bringing a uh, a couple trailer load of cars. Nobody cares. Salute to Houston. Okay. Salute to the South. Nobody tricks out cars like the South. Okay. Okay, and they, y'all about to embarrass New York. This, this New York model, they're going to come with a bunch of expensive cars, foreigns, okay? Yeah, we will. And y'all going to embarrass them. You're going to be you going to be sad when you see somebody got a microwave in their windshield. <laughs> a working a working microwave in their windshield. They're going to be in there cooking burritos in their car. And you're going to be like, "Damn." Yeah. Watch. You'll All see. Right. Well, get your tickets if you haven't got it. I can't wait to see you guys. I can't wait. I, I love Houston, but we're going to have a lot of fun that weekend. So, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do have a positive note, and it's simple, man. I said this to y'all earlier, man, and I just want to repeat it for y'all right now. For your own sanity, just let things be what they are. I truthfully want to say for my own sanity, I let be what it is. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done? 